Hey, it's Soul with another video. I'm going to talk about patch 735, Blade Catchers. Just kidding, I made that up. And you're glad I did, that's a pretty lame name. Anyway, that's the one joke I saved, and now that that's wasted, I'm going to just give some straightforward information on what to expect in this patch, and some speculation afterwards. On day one of this patch, we can safely assume the following. If you have an authenticator, you'll have four extra slots in your primary bag. Simple as that. I don't know what happens if you remove your authenticator, but really, the thing is free and it's meant to help more than hurts, so just keep it. You may or may not care, but if you do, level scaling on the whole of the planet will be implemented. This is WoW's biggest leveling change since the Cataclysm and lore is taking a back seat to gameplay flow. Zones will still have level requirements, but they'll still scale to your level up to a certain point. Classic zones will scale up to 60, Northern and Outland scales to 80, Cataclysm zones and Pandaria scales to 90, and that's about it. Command boards will be scattered throughout the land to help guide you to a new zone once you've completed all the quests in that zone, or whenever you want to move on to somewhere else. All the quest-related achievements have also been tidied up to reflect these changes. Loot seems to be in a weird place, at least at the moment. Reagents for professions, notably enchanting, are being smoothed out so that only a few reagents are needed for all recipes in the early enchanting experience. There was a thing where testers were receiving a ton of lockboxes in dungeons, but as of this build, that's gone away. So on that front, we don't quite know what to expect on live servers regarding dungeon loot. Your artifact weapon will have 50 additional ranks. Chances are pretty good that no one is close enough to start accessing these additional ranks, but hey, it's, it's there. Over on the Mythic Plus side of things, battle reses now have a group cooldown, so bringing a mix of classes capable of such a thing no longer have that advantage. As of this recording, a battle res has a 10 minute group cooldown, kind of bringing it in line with how this works in raids. The other features and tidbits coming in 735 might be paced over the course of weeks or months. There are a few mini quest lines involving Una, a ghostly battle pet you get in Antorn Waste, and a mailbox mini game that rewards a pet and a title. I'll provide links from Wowhead if you don't care for spoilers and want to get more information. Silithus itself will have a helping of quest content as the Horde and Alliance make their presence known and they do things to each other. There isn't much more to this though, and there's no sign that this is a part of another slow drip campaign of quest content. The Seething Shore Battleground will be available as we get a better handle on what's going on down in Silithus, currently impaled with something painfully obvious. It could be available at launch, or it could be unlocked via quest line, or what could be a pacing mechanism as the story of Silithus unfolds, well, if there's any more unfolding to be done. Alduar Time Walking will be available with this patch, so we may be able to participate in it as soon as the week of February 13th. This version will basically smush the two raid sizes together, including the achievements and loot tables, and will also allow you to activate the hard mode versions of these fights. And someday, could be sooner, could be later, may come the quest lines and the assets to unlock allied races. Now let's speculate a bit. With the information we have so far, I don't expect the Horde or Alliance embassies to be up. Not on day one. The assets and quest lines here really are more than likely just fragments of everything that's going to come during the 735 patch. In fact, I expect the questline to kind of sort of align with the Before the Storm book that's going to come on June 12th. The sample chapter we got in November aligns almost perfectly with a hidden cutscene that takes place probably at the start of this patch. I'll remind you one more time that these are just half-baked guesses, so don't get mad if I'm wrong, or if I'm right. Patch 735 at the earliest will launch on January 16th, just in time for the last leg of LFR, as well as the Call of the Scarab event. That way we get to play around with these new Scarab mount models. At the absolute latest, the patch will come February 6th, one week before Lich King Time Walking comes out. There probably won't be a full-on campaign with an achievement on Syllabus, but there will be snippets of quests that we'll receive now and then to keep the story moving. As time passes, and by June 12th, we'll have played through a few, but maybe not all the major events that take place in the Before the Storm book, so book readers and players won't spoil themselves so easily. No sooner than June 12th will we see the quest lines to unlock any of the allied races. Blizzard has the opportunity to put these quest lines out, but still hold on to the actual unlock of allied races till later, like maybe a month before Biffa's launch. This way, players won't be in such a scramble to complete the unlock scenario so they can start leveling their new race. One month before Biffa's launch, Teldrassil will burn. I think the Night Elf City deserves a send-off, just like how the start of Biffa will be the battle and the fall of the Undercity. Chances are pretty good that I'm wrong about everything, but it's fun to guess and see if I was right. Please support the channel with a like, subscribe, or help keep the lights on by becoming a patron. Otherwise, stay tuned for more of this and all things World of Warcraft. Until then, stay safe, stay happy, and stay breezy.